There we go. There we go. We're recording still? We are. Okay, so two dozen from the last lesson to get started. Okay, so two doubly from the last lesson. So here, um, before I start, I'll just write down what x cannot be, and x cannot be 0. But other than that, x can be any number. Okay. And before, yeah? X can be negative here. Yes. Yeah. 16 log x plus x squared plus 18x minus 8. So you get dy dx equals 16 over x plus 2x plus 18, and you need that to equal 0. Um, that means I want to solve this. So what I'll do is I'll multiply everything by x. And I can do this because I know x is not 0. So you get 16 plus 2x squared plus 18x equals 0. So you get x squared plus 9x plus 8 equals 0. Yes? Do I have the wrong number? 12x minus 7 last. Okay. I'll just change this. So. Oh, come on. Come on, Mo. Just come on. But you're doing question D. Oh, am I actually doing D? Yeah. Does it matter too much to you, Ali, if I do 2D instead of W? I don't want to do Will I continue with this one? What I can do is use the program to solve W to make sure the answer matches. Okay. Um, so here we have x, x plus 8 plus, no, plus 9 plus. I need to make 8 and I need to add them to 9, so it'll have to be 8 and 1 then. Yes, 8 and 1, yes. 8 and 1. So x equals minus 1 or minus 8. And if I sub them back into the question, I can get the y's. So I'll open up my calculator here to do that. My powerful calculator. And we'll get the y's. Or maybe as you're typing, you can get the y's for me. So here's the first answer, and then here's the second answer. Can you get me the y's, please? Come on, guys, hurry up. Oh, okay. Well, I'll put it back up, yeah. 
Guys, come on, you have to do wide values for me in the calculator. What's the first one? Or do I need to type it in? Exact? Yes? And what's the second one? Oh, uh, what's the second one? Minus, I think, uh, minus 24. Don't give me, I think. Can you, you have a calculator in front of you? Up. To the original? Yeah, it's minus 8, okay, 11 and... Oh, wow. Eleven and um, eleven minus thirty four point seven. Yeah. So this is V um Better type it in. Okay, well, can you at least read out the original function for me? What was it? Log x power 16 plus, plus x squared? Yeah, the one I. Plus 18x. Plus 18x. And there was an x squared, you said? Yes. Okay, so I want. What was my first answer for x? Minus 1, was it? Okay. So I got that, minus 25. And then, what was my second answer for x? Minus 8. Minus 8, thank you. And I get, as a decimal, minus 54. So I have minus 25 and minus 54. So that's <coughs> minus 25 and minus 54. Come on. Sorry, I have to fix my pen in a second. Hold on a second. Minus 54 point something, wasn't it? Point seven, seven three. Now what's the problem here, Ali? You are the one who asked me for this question. Now stop talking, okay? Now what's the problem here? What's, I mean, I typed in, that is the same thing I wrote on the page, isn't it? Log x16 plus x squared plus 18x minus 8. Log x16 plus x squared plus 18x minus 8. And I did use, you saw me use, what was it, minus 1 and minus 8. So I got these two answers. And you can see I'm using ln, not log. So if you don't get this on the calculator, I don't understand why not. What's the problem here? Do we have this on our calculator? Yes. Yes, we do. All right. If you don't, show me. Okay, so that's, I don't think that's finished because now I need to know which one's the max and which one's the min. So I need to get the derivative again, the second derivative. So here, the first derivative was 16x power minus 1 plus 2x plus 18. And then the second derivative is minus 16x minus 2 plus 2. So I have to put in now minus 1. And I have to put in minus 8. And I want to see if it's positive or negative. So I'll just sub it in on my calculator here again. Um, the second derivative, there it is right there, the same thing I got on paper. Uh, put in minus 1, and that's a negative number. 
put in minus 8, that's a positive number. Just double check that. Put in minus 1, and that's a negative. Put in minus 8, and that's a positive. So the first answer is a max, and the second answer is a min. So this is the max, and then this is the min. Okay, and that's it then. Uh, okay, write that down, please. Now, Ali, do you need me to type in the other question to see if the answer matches? Yeah, the other question, no, but there's another one. All right. Um, I just want to check the answer. For which one? Uh, X. It says negative 4 and 7, which is a full max. But if you put in negative 4 and 2... I think X might be wrong, actually, because... <coughs> I think... Ali... I think X might be wrong because I was looking at fixing these last night and I noticed that a couple of the cubits were wrong. So I can type it in to give you the right answer now. Just call out the, equ uh, the cubic equation for me. What is it? Y equals 2X times Yeah. Plus 9X times Yeah. Minus 24X. Yeah. Plus 30. Plus 30. And this is X, by the way. Okay. So differentiate it, well, I should have differentiated once first. Okay, there it is there. And then you want to know when this is equal to zero. So minus four and one are the two answers. Then you have to sub these back in. So when you sub in minus four, you get that. And when you sub in one, you get that. Yep. Okay. Uh, and then we can check if it's a max or a min. So when I sub in minus 4, I get a max. And then when I sub in 1, I get the min. Okay, so that's what the answer should be. Anything else on that page now? Anything else? No? So just before we go on, there's a table I want to draw for you that will be useful for you to see from that page. So here's the table here. It has nine boxes inside of it. So up the top we have the first derivative is negative, or the first derivative is zero, or the first derivative is positive. And then down the side we'll do the second derivatives. Second derivative is negative, second derivative is zero, second derivative is positive. Okay, if the first derivative is negative, what does that tell me about the graph? Who knows that? If the first derivative is negative, what do we know about the graph then at that point? By the way, I should, always, I should also say for these graphs, I'm near x. Okay, if the first one is negative, what do I know about the graph? It's going up or down? You can know it's going down. Negative slope, it's decreasing. So it's decreasing, and if the second derivative is negative, what shape is that? Concave or convex, if you remember? Negative here is con yeah, that shape. So it's concave and it's going down. So that means the graph um, would kind of have this shape. See, it's concave and it's decreasing. And x would be you know, somewhere in the middle here on my graph. So if you want, I'll just put x like here. Okay, if now the derivative is 0 and the second derivative is negative, what type of shape is that? Well, it's concave still, but what does this mean? Yeah, it's 
the top, isn't it? So the graph looks like this. Positive is the same as this, except it's increasing instead of decreasing. But it's still concave. Oh my goodness. Why are you late again for my class, Joshua and Charles? Why are you late? How can you still continue to be late for my class? That's not a good explanation. You have a chemistry sign due today, correct? And Sylvia's there from 8 o'clock, correct? No, you take personal responsibility for your own work. Anyways, I can't see how that would make you so late for my class. saying uh, it's positive so it's increasing but the second derivative is negative so it's still concave so it's concave and increasing so that means it will look like this okay now for the last row it's all the same except the second derivative is positive so what shape is positive convex, convex which is this shape so those three are really the same, except we get, I'm um, sorry, decreasing and convex, turning point or stationary point and convex, and increasing and convex. So here, here, here. If the second derivative is zero, is an inflection point, probably, uh, which means it's switching between being concave and convex. In fact, I don't really know if it was concave and then convex, or if it was convex and then concave. So these graphs, they're not accurate here because, like I said, I don't know which way it's changing. So I'll draw it, but just keep in mind, um, I'm not sure if it's like this, or it could actually be the other way around. Okay, so we have concave. Well, no, actually, I do know. Sorry, I do know. Because here is negative, means it's decreasing. So I should draw it like this. So it's decreasing. Because if it was positive, increasing, then I would have to draw it like this. So I can get it increasing in the middle. Where is the X? X would be here and here. So you can see that from the first and the second derivative, you get a lot of information about the shape of the graph. And if the first and second derivative are both zero, this is what I was trying to talk about the last day. Um, it's not known, actually. So if the first and second derivative are both zero, we don't know the shape of the graph. Um, it could actually be... It could be this. Um, it 
could be this as well. Um, and in fact, it could be. It could be. I don't think it could quite be any. But anyways, my point is, you have no idea about the shape. Huh? No, no, no. You've no. My. You have no information. Not that it's not any shape. It's just you don't know what shape it is. So if this was ever to happen in the exam, where they ask you to draw based. Uh, in the calculus question, in the calculus question, they sometimes ask you information like, "What's the graph like?" 99% uh, of the time, you can just use this first and second derivative. But very, very rarely, and I mean once only in the exam, did you have this situation where the first and the second derivative were both zero. When that happens, it means you don't know anything about the shape. And the only way to do the question then is to put in some values for x to make a graph. So like you have x with some different values and get some different points. Uh, like I said, this has only happened once in the exam and I don't think it would happen again. But if it does happen, if you do get this and this both zero, then just take out your calculator, put in some values for x near your answer from the previous part so you can get the shape. Okay, uh, But like I said, it's not likely to happen. So please make sure you copy that in your notebook well. It'll be useful for this because the question would ask you, is it a max? So it's a max in only this situation. When the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is negative. They'll sometimes ask you if it's a min, which means you need this situation. They'll sometimes ask you if it's a fallen uh, saddle point, a fallen inflection point. So this is a fallen inflection point. And then, what do you think this one's called? Rising inflection point. So in the exam, they're looking for usually for you to decide, is it this, 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 or this? And the way you decide is by calculating the first and second derivative. So this is max, min, fallen inflection point, and then rising inflection point. Okay, you have that taken down? Okay, so we'll go to the next page then, 90. Now, I didn't want to do this in the tutorial today because I want to give you time to try it at home. So next uh, week in the tutorial, we'll have a look at these problems if you have trouble with them, which you will. So today, I'm going to do some exam revision in the tutorial instead of doing it next week in the revision week, okay? So the practical problems here, um, there's no new information for this exercise is just using what you've learned so far to solve practical problems. So um, I'll give you an example here. Okay. So here is a formula that tells you the height of a ball that's thrown up in the air at some time. So if you were to draw the graph here here is the height, and then here is the time. So at the beginning, when t is zero, you can see the ball's at the ground. Then one second later, when t is one, the ball is uh, actually quite high, at 95 meters. So maybe it's a gun or something instead. Uh, so as time goes by, the ball will get higher up in the air, and then will fall back down to earth, like that. So my question is, when will it be at its highest point? What time? 
Well, we know how to find the maximum. You need to know when the derivative is zero. The derivative here is 100 minus 10t, which needs to equal zero. So that means t equals 10. So that's the time when it's a maximum. Sub that back in, I can get the s. 100 times 10 minus 5 times 10 squared. So that would be 500 meters and seconds. So that's it finished. You know that the ball will be at its maximum height 10 seconds after it's launched and it will be 500 meters above the ground. We need to double check that it is a maximum. So if I calculate the second derivative, I get minus 10, which is less than zero. Therefore, it is a maximum. Often in the exam, they will ask you to confirm that it is a maximum or a minimum. Um, yep. No, the second derivative is minus 10. Coincidentally. Physics students, recall that I said the change in position with respect to time is actually what? V. So doing it this way is the same as what we did in physics class of figuring out when V is zero to get the maximum. Hmm? And that one is the acceleration then, yep. Yeah. Which is minus 10, which tells you what I used for G in this question. Okay, so that's the first question there. Um, that is kind of like the first, in fact, oh, that accidentally is the first one. So that's actually question one from the book. Okay, can I go on to the next one now? Yeah. Okay, so um, in this question now, which I'm going to just make up here, Oh, tank. Um, here I want to make a tank. And I'll say this is H, and then here is R. And I would like my tank to hold, let's say, um, 1,000 litres. Although I should really use maybe meters cubed. How many centimeter cubes in a liter? It's a thousand, isn't it? A thousand cc's in a liter. So if I want a thousand liters, that's a million cubic centimeters. So that's 10 to the 6 cm cubed, or milliliters, or whatever you prefer to use. I'll use cm cubed. What's that? Huh? No, no, it's my own example. Sorry, so I shouldn't write number two here. Okay, so what we would like to do in this question is to make this tank use the least material possible. So what you're imagining here is you're designing a tank, maybe it's to hold 1,000 litres of oil, something like this. And we need to make it so that it holds 1,000 litres, of course, and we use as little material making this tank as possible. So if you think about it, the material, basically the cost is related to the surface area. Surface area, I say. You picture in like sheets of metal or something here, stuck together. So if you use less metal, the tank will be cheaper. So what we need to write down first is a formula for the surface area. 
If you don't remember from high school, I'll tell you what it is. Basically, you have two circles here. So that's pi r squared h multiply 2, because there's two circles. And then you have one large rectangle in the middle that's rolled around like this. So it's one large rectangle rolled around. So then the area for the rectangle <coughs> would be the circumference multiply the other length here. So what's that? Um, 2 pi or h. So there you go. That's your formula for surface area. So um, what we want to do is make this a minimum. But one problem here is we have two variables, R and H. And so far we've only been dealing with one variable, which is X. So that means we've got to change one of these. And the way we can change that is by using this. I haven't used this yet. The formula for volume for a cylinder is pi R squared H. You know that that should equal 10 to the 6. So that means you know h should equal 10 to the 6 over pi r squared. You can put that in for h, and now you only have one variable. Surface area is 2 pi r squared h, 10 to the 6 over pi r squared, plus 2 pi r h again, 10 to the 6 over pi or squared. We can do a bit of cancelling. Pi's go. Um, or squareds go. Is that right? Yes. Two times ten. Um, yes, two times ten to the six. No, I was surprised that that cancelled. Let me just no, double. Do you have another R? So, Yes. Yes. Sorry, there's no it's no square here. Thank you, Tanish. No square there. I was worried when this was cancelling. Yeah. Sorry, this is the area. No, wait. No, it's there. There should be a square. There's not. Yes, there should be or squared. Thank you. But there's no h here. Thank you. I was a bit worried when everything was cancelling. Okay. Two. I'll just rewrite it. Okay. Two times pi times r squared. Cancel, cancels. Cancels, cancels. Plus two times 10 to the 6 over R. That's surface area. If you prefer, you can think of it like this. Y equals 2 pi X squared plus 2 times 10 to the 6 over X. That's all it really is. Because now R is our variable and the surface area is our Y. And we would like a minimum here. So how can I find a minimum? Well, like before, you make the derivative equal to zero. I'm going to remove the last line, but you can keep it in your notebook, okay? If you want, you can change the or into x and the sa into y, but I'm just going to remove it. Okay, so derivative now. Derivative of surface area, and or is the variable. This would be 4 pi or. And if you need some help here, this is like R minus 1, when you have R down below. So it will be minus 2 times 10 to the 6, R minus 2. And you want that to equal 0. So you get 4 pi R minus 2 times 10 to the 6 over R squared needs to equal 0. So you get 4 pi R equals 2 times 10 to the 6 over r squared. So you get r cubed equals 2 times 10 to the 6 over 4 pi. Because I bring the r squared up to the left. 
So this is the cube root here. Fifty-four point one nine. So since this is centimeters, I'll just do it to the nearest centimeter. So what did we say? Fifty-four then centimeters. <laughs> but of course I'm not finished because I still need to get the height. So I need to put this all the way back in. I can't even see it up here anymore. Height was 10 power 6 over pi r squared. So remember, height was 10 power 6 over pi r squared. So if you take this 54 and put it in here, can you tell me what you get for height? It should be like 109 maybe? 108? Point. So 108 then. So we know now, if we build a tank of radius 54 centimeters and height 108 centimeters, it will use the minimum amount of material possible. But it should still hold 1,000 meters. So let's just quickly check that. Volume equals pi or squared h. Now it won't be exactly a million, but can, uh, can you tell me what this is roughly? Nine eight nine three seven five. So you can see it's because we have to round off here. It's nearly a million, anyways. If I rounded this off, it would be a million as well. If I did um, one significant figure for sure, two significant figures would be ninety nine. We need to check that it's a minimum. It'd be terrible if we made the worst possible tank using the most material. We want to make sure it's a minimum. So I'll just do it on the side here. Second derivative now. So differentiate this again. That would be 4, 10 to the 6, or minus 3. The minus 2 comes down. Positive or negative? Well, I have to put in the OR, but I won't even bother to put in the OR because I can see no matter what the value of OR, this here will be positive. Of course, because OR will be positive since it's a radius. All right. So I know that this is positive. I don't even need to check, but if you want, you can put the OR in here and you will get a positive. If the second derivative is positive, then it is a minimum. So this is the best size tank. It uses the minimum amount of metal, but we made sure it holds 1,000 liters. I want to show you that in a graph as well. So I don't know where you, do you need me to scroll down to the bottom here? In a moment, I'd like you to read out the formula at the beginning there for surface area here. After I, Give you a minute to write this down. How do you get the second derivative? Uh, I just differentiate it. This one here, which was the first derivative. Now, this here is a constant, so it's gone. And then this power comes down, and then you take one from the power. Oh yeah. Well, even so, still with the four pi, it's still going to be positive because you have a positive plus a positive. Four pi plus that. Positive and positive, still positive.
wrote this down? Yes? Um, can you read out this equation here for me, please? 2 pi r squared plus 2 times 10 to the 6 over r. Okay, so what is it? 2 pi r squared. Two times ten to the six over, or yeah. So I'm just going to graph this now for you. Now I'll have to zoom out a lot, I'd say, because it goes to thousands. But there we go. Okay. Now, I don't want to look at the negative because R can't be negative. So here it doesn't make much sense. So let me just do center on cross, which is here. Okay. There we go. So what I've just graphed for you there is on the y is surface area and on the x is the radius so you can see what happens is if you make the radius bigger and bigger you use a lot more material and if you make the radius smaller and smaller you use a lot more material so there's some point in the middle here where the radius would make the least material used and you can see from this graph it's going to be roughly around the 50 mark somewhere around here so why do I get maximums when I go past or when I'm before the best value. So what you need to picture here is uh, your tank could be very, very skinny and very, very long or very, very short but quite large <laughs> circles at either end. So this one here of course is bad, this one here is bad because you use a lot of material to make this tank hold 1,000 litres. And you use a lot of material here to make this tank hold 1,000 litres. So there's some shape in between that will hold 1,000 litres, but will use the least amount possible. And that's what we found there. And that's that one there. Now this tank question, or something like the tank question, uh, it comes up frequently in the exam as a practical problem. I've seen it in total three times, which is actually a lot for practical problems because it, you know that practical problems could be different each year since they're made up problems. So the fact that this problem has repeated itself three times when really it should never repeat itself means that it's you know, a common question in the exam. Uh, it will come up like this, or you know, you know, the, the example last time was uh, can of cola or a can of beans or whatever. The idea is you want to make a can hold a certain amount, but you want to make it as small as possible, but still hold whatever, 1,000 litres. It's again like number two. Number two is similar to this one, but I made it a little bit more complicated by putting a cost. I think I said the metal at the top costs different to the metal on the side. For the whole surface, or just one square two into our area? Okay, so in that question, you can actually work out the cost because once you have the surface area, you can multiply by the price there to get how much it would cost to make. Uh, if I have a look at some other ones here, um, no, not to do, just to talk about. Number four, I've seen in the exam. Twice, actually, I think. Yes, twice. But all the questions are here. Uh, one to six, I would consider questions possible for the exam. And in fact, some of them have been on the exam, nearly identical to this. 
The only one which I say might not be on the exam because it's quite difficult is number seven. But it's good for you to practice difficult ones, which is number seven. One, two, three, four. So you see, we'll get this book finished this week. Now, just before you go, I just want to get the attendance here. All right, group one, Sultan, now Angela, yeah, Olivia, Don, Ali, Rasmisa, Arif, Luke, Charles, group one, Daniel, Irai, Soon, Dana, don't know, Mohammed Al Kahapra. Mohammed S, Tolu, Yusuf, Hussain, Sherry, Sonetta, no, all right, Elsie, Grace, Anthony, Navid, the other child is late, Precious here, Kunan, not here, Mohammed Abdel Wahab, Tanish here, Tad here, Joshua not. So for your homework, I've done basically question one. So I'd like you to try two to seven. Uh, you will find some of them difficult. Yes, try seven. Yes, it's good to try difficult ones. Uh, I'll start the tutorial on Monday next week looking at this, okay? All right, that's awesome.